Hi, hello, welcome back to Body Based Therapy with me, Deb Raj. And uh, something I'm often asked, you know, running a channel, running workshops and, and, and doing sessions a lot out in the world, is like, what is your daily workout, Deb? What is your daily workout? I make no secret of the fact that I'm still most definitely working on myself, but I'm still trying to clear out layers of old tension from the past. And that I recognize the need to maintain a certain level of daily pressure, just keeping, keeping stuff flowing, keeping stuff opening, and keeping me moving along. Actually, it was back around 2016, I went to do an uh, afternoon bioenergetics class in Brighton, run by a friend of mine, and again, it gave me such a powerful experience, I just thought, I'm gonna do this stuff every day. I took that kind of commitment, and now about six years later, you know, I'm happy that I've stuck with it. Pretty much seven days a week, unless there's some extraneating circumstance, I'll be doing my bio workout in the morning, shortly after getting up. And what I also like, because I do have in some ways quite a capricious mind at times, is to not follow that, but to really stick with one workout for like a decent length of time. Before the workout that I'm just about to demonstrate, uh, I was doing a kind of more rapid workout, working on a one minute thing, and I kept that going for about somewhere between a year and 18 months, every morning. And it underwent a few little modifications here and there, but basically the, 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 the essential format remained the same. And I mentioned this because this is an important lesson if you want to do this work, and particularly if you want to work on your own. You need a certain level of discipline. You can't just follow your capricious mind, but once, you know, we all pretty much have these days, and that wants to just jump from one thing to the next. You know, if you have that capricious mind like I do, then give it a bit of time every now and again, but not when you're doing bio, not when you're working on yourself, because it will completely hijack everything. So like I said, I was sticking with this workout for like a year, 18 months or so, and it was on a one minute thing, it had eight uh, bio postures, quite super evocative, and then I would go into some ab workout stuff that I got from uh, Jeff Cavaliere on YouTube, you know, the uh, Athlean X guy, I think he calls himself. That was pretty intense. And then I'd do some Reiki and breath work on one minute ding and finish with some yoga stretches. It was all about 30 minutes long. And then this spring, I think it was around April, I started to feel like I really wanted to, you know, this was good. It gave me a lot of energy and I was pumped up for work and feeling open and clear. But I also felt like I wanted to work more deeply on the rings of tension around my head and particularly on this part of my spine, just below uh, the cervical part of the spine, just here between my shoulder blades and going up to a kind of knot that I have like uh, right at the top of my neck here. You know, it's actually quite a, a common knot for people working on the computer. But, you know, I wanted to keep working on the tension around there. And so after tuning in, I devised a workout which basically is a workout I've now been doing since April, uh, about four or five months. And I intend to stick with it for a while longer until some major intuition or, or shift of direction comes or it's cleared out what I needed to clear out. So I'm not going to actually do the whole workout as a follow along thing, but I'm going to demonstrate each posture that I do in this workout. It has three distinct sections to it and it goes on about 35, 40 minutes. I start with bioenergetics and I move on to Reiki and breath work and then I use some deep yoga stretches just to ground myself at the end. So let's take a look. To begin with, I put on a little bit of background music, then I put on a, a three minute ding, basically, which I'm gonna use throughout the workout. Uh, I, it actually would be better if I kind of altered it to a minute and a half at some point towards the end, but it's a lot of hassle to break it and get up and look at the phone and stuff, and it's not, it's not so good, so I make use of the three minute ding throughout. And it begins with two repetitions of bow, shoulders, raise, arch. So it looks roughly like, if you probably know the bow position, feet a little bit wider than shoulder width apart for me, can also be shoulder width apart. Knees a little bent, super important, do not lock through the knees. And outsides of the feet roughly parallel, bringing the arms up, press the pelvis forwards, stick your chest out a little and breathe into your bow posture. That's one ding, three minutes. And then the second posture, when the ding goes, I come into shoulders raise, which is again the same grounded stance. Uh, knees bent, absolutely very important for this posture because most people will unconsciously lock out. Their nervous system is actually running them uh, on, uh, in a posture like this. They lock the knees, and what you want to do is keep those knees flexible, pull the shoulders right up towards the ears, shoulders raise. Also, for most people, their nervous system 
if they're quite unconscious, will quite quickly slacken off the shoulders raised because it's very evocative. It brings a lot of stuff up. So you've got to keep your knees bent, shoulders pulling up towards the up towards your ears, and breathe. Three minutes of that, and then hanging forwards into the arch posture. If you're a regular consumer of my content, you know what this posture looks like. But you bring your feet much closer together, like six, eight inches, you know, 15, 20 centimeters, and slowly hang forwards. And recently what I've been doing with the arch, because I can, I can hang right down and put my, you know, my palms on the floor, but what I've actually been doing is I noticed that, in common with some other bio schools, it's good to have your fingertips maybe like six to 12 inches off the mat, you know, 15 to 30 centimeters. So you're hanging like that. It stretches a specific part of your lower back, which is very useful in bio. You know, there's, there are people who can go into a full forward bend, you know, palms on the floor, elbows not even locked. But when, when they come up a bit, it's very, very intense for them because there's still a lot held in this part of the lower back that gets activated. So that's useful. Three minutes of that, and then I go around that sequence once again. And then when I've completed with my second arch, I come down onto the mat for some Reiki and breath work. And getting down on the mat, I come straight into my Reiki and working position, which is a standard posture for Reiki and breath work, which means knees up in the air, feet about hip width apart and a comfortable distance from the ass, head relaxed, back on the mat, don't use a pillow, and arms relaxed, either open, kind of like this, or most comfy anyway, which is for me is like this. And then I begin with just for, for two dings, or sometimes three dings, it's really doing a lot, right here and breathing, which is like belly and chest open and then close. So inflate the belly, throat relaxed, very important, throat relaxed, then push the belly up and then expand the chest, relax the belly, relax the chest. And I really feel into my belly as I do this, because this is key, you know, the, we actually are kind of embedded as human beings in a massive ocean of feeling, but most of it is repressed. And when you feel into that, a lot of that is mediated through the belly and where we repress it is from the belly. So if you really feel into your belly while doing this Reiki and breathing, by the way, you can also use just pure belly breathing for this. But if you really feel into your belly, at some point, a lot of energy starts to come. And what I find after about a minute and a half of this is I start to get quite a lot of tension around my face. I cough, something releases from my neck. It's spontaneous though, it's that, that's specific to me because I'm, I'm trying to work on these areas of my body and I know I've got holding there. If you're not feeling so much doing, it, doing this Reiki and breathing for, for six minutes or nine minutes, then what you can do is scrunch your face up and do it. That will more likely trigger stuff. So that means closing your eyes tight, kind of screwing your mouth up, pulling your forehead muscles down, and then, then right in breathing in this posture. And that will usually do something. When you're doing this right in breathing, by the way, ensure that your the frequency of like one repetition of breath is usually between five and 10 seconds. That's a good level. No faster than, than five seconds for a whole inhale and exhale. Or you'll go into some kind of hyperventilated state, which is not really the um, objective here. So I do this for two or three dings, depending on how much is moving. And then I come into uh, the croak breath for about a minute and a half or half a ding, which is sucking in the chest, like a half inhale with the chest and a kind of croak sound, holding it for about a second and then a, then a belly flick, a rapid flick inhale with the belly and an R sound exhale for the whole thing. So it goes like, it's a tricky technique, but it's very evocative. It starts to really open up this area of the body. So it's like, times there is to leave like a half one second gap between this <gasps> croaking half inhale of the chest and the belly flick before you go into the belly flick which is like that 
flick the belly up, hold it for a second, and then just let it come down slowly with an R ah sound like ah. What's great about that technique is that you know, in these Viking right breathwork, you're working a lot on the, the chest cavity, the belly cavity, and the diaphragm here. Yeah. And it's very easy, especially for the diaphragm, to get very locked and blocked over our life. You know, we tend to push down anything lower than the diaphragm. So the throat, the diaphragm, and the pelvis are the three areas on the kind of central axis of the body that really need to be worked if we want to be whole, because that's where the energetic blocks are when, we, when we've taken a lot of mental control. So I do that for about half of the one work, the three minute ding, just guessing it. And then I just go into purely the belly flick with R sound for the remaining one and a half minutes. Just like, ah, ah. This again is quite an advanced technique. You know, you need to have done a bit of the belly breathing and this kind of thing for a while. So you can flick your belly up in like a quarter of a second or so. And basically then you hold it for one or two seconds and then you start to release like, ah, the throat should remain relaxed. This is very important. And this flick, when you really feel the belly, can again start to evoke a lot of energy into the belly center. One more time. Ah. Ah. And then when the ding goes after three minutes, I go into three minutes of just pelvic, pelvic tilting, basically, following the breath. So tilting the pelvic down, slight movement, tailbone stays on the mat, inhale, belly and chest. When fully inhaled, give an R sound and tilt the pelvis all the way back so the lower back comes back on the mat. Ah. Exhale completely before going back to the start position and then inhale. Ah. Important when you're kind of pushing your belly back, like sorry, when you're pushing your pelvis back like this, the lower back comes down, but you shouldn't tense your belly excessively. Most of the pressure should come here from the quads. So I'll do this for one ding as well, three minutes. And then just to complete this whole sequence, I'm going to do four yoga stretches. Let's take a look at those. So I start with two pigeon poses. So you bring, bring one leg forwards. Come down on the mat, slowly drop my head to touch, so that my forehead is touching the mat. And then, kind of slowly push up, somewhere towards the vertical. I don't usually get fully vertical. I'm not so limber in some of these places and quite ancient now. So that one's on the left side, then on the right to do the same. Just stretching out. Opening your base and then back up. So I do each of those for roughly one and a half minutes each till there's one ding. And then two final stretches, bringing my knees to the edge of the mat. And slowly coming back into like, let's come a bit more forwards. I'm not sure of the right yoga name for this stretch, but it's a good one. Slowly coming back, putting my elbows down. Quite a good stretch from the neck here. And then coming right down into here. My knees don't quite touch the mat still. Get my back down. Breathe in this stretch. It's quite powerful on the legs for me. It's very good for your, your leg muscles. And then about after a minute and a half or so, you have to judge it. Just come back up and slowly do the reverse, keeping the ass down by your heels, coming forwards like this. And then when the final ding goes, then I completed my workout. So that's the workout I've been doing daily for like uh, the last four or five months. And I'll probably keep it up for a while longer. I feel like it definitely is opening stuff up here. You know, I've got these old circuits of control going on for my upper brain, probably for my womb time even, you know, dramas in my womb or whatever. And then they, they, they've kind of created some level of fusion in some of the, the muscles around the top of the top part of the spine and I want to keep opening this up cool I hope you've enjoyed this video and I uh, hope it's inspired you to get down there and keep working remember daily is the way and don't change things all the time don't you know if you need if you have this capricious mind find something else to be capricious about don't do it with this
cool. Feel free to check out my books. There's a link to Amazon below. And also I've got some online courses if you want to go deeper with this work. I also run one-to-ones over Zoom. Feel free to hit me up and message. I'm around and I like chatting to people about therapy. It's all good. Okay, speak to you soon and have a great day.